And that is that. This is the 415ers podcast brought to you by the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. Please download the Odyssey app. Download, rate, subscribe to us there. Uh, we're coming at you twice a week. I don't know. We'll start revving up to three episodes once the preseason gets underway. And uh, that's upcoming soon, early in August. And they have three preseason games along with a joint practice against the Las Vegas Raiders. So looking forward to getting into that. Um, Mark, got to wrap up with some of kind of just overall takeaways from week one of training camp. Uh, if you want to continue to to get into the the quarterbacks, I'm very happy to. Um, but uh, kind of what did you take away from the first, well, let's say, five days of practice? Uh, well, it's something that you said. I forget exactly when, but earlier on the episode, um, Brandon Ayuk is the star of 49ers camp. Uh, and it, it does feel a little bit wrong saying that after just one uh, fully padded practice. And I, and I know that was the case that, that people were calling in the star of Niners camp, even before Monday today, as we're recording this here, Monday evening, um, that I think is like the second major storyline so far after all the quarterback news, Brandon Ayuk looks like he is a superstar, uh, in the making. And, I, I find it interesting because it's not like he's going to put up superstar numbers, even if he is one of the, the best wide receivers in the league, just simply because of the way the Ford Vanners offense has struggled or pardon me is, is set up. Um, but him being this, this guy who's taken a gigantic step forward, who continues to progress uh, is, is the biggest storyline for me. There are others, including the, the Nick Bosa contract situation, which we can get into in a little bit. Um, but Brandon Ayuk being a, a budding superstar, Evan, I think takes the cake for me. Uh, it's something that we both, I think, kind of saw coming, not necessarily him putting up incredible numbers, but you could both, we could both see the writing on the wall, uh, that this was a motivated Brandon Ayuk heading into this training camp. And, uh, at least up to this point, he has passed these early tests with flying colors because, you talk a lot about Trey Lance having a good day today on Monday at practice. Um, he hadn't really been targeting Brandon Ayuk much before then because he hasn't been getting a lot of first team reps. Um, but whoever's throwing to Trey, or pardon me, whoever's throwing to Brandon Ayuk is having a really, really good time of it because he's catching absolutely everything thrown his way. Yeah, I think he had what five catches on Sunday and four of them were touchdowns. <laughs> uh, three of them, by the way, from Sam Darnold. So that might be helping him if he's getting those opportunities with Brandon Ayuk. No, I'm with you. And it's something that we've come to expect now, beginning with last training camp. I know Brandon Ayuk came out with his hair on fire last off season and proved it with his work ethic off the field. And then of course the production and results on the field. So that that's absolutely one. Um, to me, I, I kind of like, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the defense has performed well. Uh, but I am always curious to see how a defensive coordinator that, is in a, as unique situation as Steve Wilkes is kind of assimilates and also is able to bring his own flair. And from what we can tell Mark, uh, Steve Wilkes is not playing around when he's talking about blitzing and bringing yeah. a heavy amount of extra defenders, because the report was that it's instead of, you know, just kind of like third down situations, which was when D'Amico Ryan's would generally dial up a blitz in training camp. It, the reports are like every other play that Steve Wilkes is bringing pressure from some different direction. And one guy in particular who I know you're high on, Jair Brown, has mm. found his way onto the field. And not even in a situation where, like you talked about, he's usurping Sean Gibson. They're using a lot of three safety sets. And so they're trying to maximize his skill set, use his speed, coverage skills. And maybe this defense does look a little more different than we expected despite having such incredible players by the way the defensive line has also been very good drake jackson looks outstanding he had a great monday uh javon kinlaw had a great monday both of them had sacks on day five and now it's also about stacking days for both of those players um but they're doing all of this all of this without the best defensive player in football nick bosa who would be my other takeaway not necessarily something that is troublesome but first day of pads i know was kind of a marking point for a lot of people because debo samuel signed his contract extension the 31st of july nick bosa obviously obviously has not by the time we've entered august the 49ers according to john lynch have chosen not to fine him the forty thousand dollars per day that they could if they wanted to but he did mention some offhand comment that was along the lines of 
well, you know, we're not, we're in a position where we don't have to do that, which made me think, well, if you were in a position to do that, would you <laughs> charge Nick Bosa $40,000? But neither here nor there. Um, but I guess it's a little more eyebrow raising than we expected, just because I think a lot of people assumed he would have inked his re- record setting deal by now. Yeah, I always set like right around now is kind of the, the over under point. We're recording this July 31st, and, and you're right up to this point. It hasn't happened just yet. It's not a big deal if it happens in a week. It's, it's still really not that big of a deal if it happens in two weeks. I think Nick Bosa is the kind of player, the kind of athlete who is staying ready on his own. And, yeah, you you always love those live reps against your teammates to help get you ready for game action. Um, but it would seem to me, at least, Evan, I don't know, maybe you disagree, that Nick Bosa is the kind of guy who needs – a month long training camp, a little less than, than most other players. So I'm really not that worried about it at all. I have stood by the fact that it's just a question of when, not if it's going to happen. Uh, and I know a couple of, of comments from John Lynch. I know last week he even said something along the lines of this is a little more of a complex deal, complex situation than some of our past extensions around this time of year. Those things have those comments have raised some eyebrows just a little bit, um, but it he's also said he's he's qualified all of those statements with saying, but I'm not worried about it at all. We're going to get it done. I have the utmost confidence in that. So I'll just you know fall in lockstep with John Lynch, not worried about it at all. But you're right; it has been impressive the way the defense has performed in training camp without him. I'm a little less. Um, I don't know. I, I worry a little bit less about this unit versus that unit in training camp. I tend to focus a little more individually. A couple of names you brought up, Drake Jackson and Javon Kinlaw. I know Kinlaw on Monday dominated uh, some one-on-one on one drills against some backups, including John Feliciano, a, a reserve lineman they brought in from the, uh, I, I think from the Giants last year. He's been with the Giants before. Uh, He dominated those, and then he went up against some starters, Jake Brendel and Spencer Burford, and got beat, but still a step forward for Javon Kinlaw there. And then Drake Jackson over the weekend had an incredible rep where he was kind of forced into a really bad situation, and and he was tasked with sticking with a running back coming out of the backfield. I think it might have been Elijah Mitchell running out of the backfield, and he stayed step for step with him down uh, the middle part of the field, and as the throw came in, managed to to knock it away. So uh, Drake Jackson, he's he's lost some weight. He, he seems quicker. Uh, and the fact that he's able to stick with a, a running back like that stood out to me as well. So I'm, I'm with you in that regard, less from a unit perspective, but more from an individual perspective. Those two, and I would say specifically Drake Jackson, have stood out. And if he kind of separates himself from the other potential starters at that edge edge rusher spot, suddenly you're looking at uh, a, a lesser, obviously nowhere near on the Nick Bosa level, but you you view that spot as less of a weakness and more of just the weakest of four total really good players. So his development, I think, is key because it gives offensive lines uh, less of a place to maybe slack off of because you have so much talent elsewhere. Yeah, also one name that we haven't heard a whole lot about, which in my mind is an endorsement, is Colton McKivitz. Mm. I feel like people would be very quick to jump on him, and we would be hearing some things about Colton McKivitz is if he was not performing well. I think he gave up a sack on Monday, uh, but was pretty dominant. I read that he was the only lineman not to give up a sack in one-on-one drills on Monday. So the fact that Colton McKivitz is flying under the radar is a good sign to me. Uh, one last thing about the Bosa holdout. I'm, I'm not worried about it, but one reason I do believe that this is going to go on a bit longer than people expect, even more so than it probably already has, is because uh, he's not the first Bosa to hold out. Now, it was a different situation, but Joey Bosa held out for a little over a month before his rookie season. And you could chalk that up to the negligence of the Chargers at the time and kind of the way they tried to structure his contract. Uh, but the Bosa's, along with their father, John, of course, his NFL experience, um, are not going to do anything less than the best thing for them. And mm-hmm. so I think when John Lynch talks about the complexity of this deal, number one, he's speaking to the fact that it's going to be a record-setting deal. And anytime you're trying to figure out how much more you're going to be paid, 
than the next highest paid person, well, then you're probably going to jostle back and forth. There's going to be some haggling, some negotiation, trying to find a middle ground. But also the fact that this is a legacy family and one that understands the business side of the NFL as well as the on-field side and has been productive at both has been more than productive in the case of Nick Bosa. Yeah. Um, that's Those are some of the factors why I believe that this is going to take a bit longer. Yeah. No, I understand that as well. Those are good points. Uh, one other thing I think that deserves a quick shout out before we do wrap up. This will be very quick. Um, Jake Moody, rookie kicker, drilled a 55-yard field goal on Monday's practice. Uh, I know he's been splitting reps similar to how like Trey Lance and Sam Darnold have. Uh, he's been splitting reps with Zane Gonzalez. Uh, but Jake Moody delivered a 55-yard field goal. We haven't really heard a lot about him either. Uh, like you said about Colton McKivitz, I think that's probably good news. If you're hearing about your team's projected starting kicker, it's generally bad news. Uh, so Jake Moody flying under the radar a little bit, which I think is is good news for a young kicker. And that'll wrap it up for this episode of the 415ers. We'll be back on Thursday for your second episode of the week, coming at you twice a week here in the training camp portion of the beginning of the NFL season. We'll switch up to three episodes when the preseason games kick off, but that has been this episode of the 415ers from Mark Granny. My name is Evan Giddings. Please download the Odyssey app, rate, subscribe to us there. Check us out on the 95.7 The Game YouTube channel. Like and subscribe if you're there as well. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you next time.